Hey everyone, welcome to today's live video. Wednesdays, as you know, have quickly become my favorite day of the week and I'm excited to catch up with everybody. A lot's happened in the last week. So um, anyway, as everybody's hopping on, as usual, I always ask for everyone to keep their comments kind, both to me and to each other, um, to give each, each other grace always. And I always love knowing where everybody is from. So do shout out where you live, where you're from. Um, I do hope this two o'clock time period is working for everybody. It's Mountain Standard Time, so um, I, I don't know. Do you prefer 11 o'clock or do you like the two o'clock? I know last week we did 11 o'clock and it was really good. Okay, Lorraine is helping on. Susan, hello, welcome everybody. So glad you're all here. Brigetti, Brigatti is here. Rachel Wilkie, hi, up from Bloomington Hills. Um, Rachel, I was gonna send you a DM. Um, if you'll send me a DM of your address, I was gonna write you a thank you note. You gave us the sweetest box that you dropped off at the post office and the quince loved what you gave them, especially those hairbrushes. They're amazing. Um, Rachel, hi. <laughs> so anyway, um, Caitlin is from Florida. Charlotte, hi. Welcome. Glad that you're here. Everybody's jumping on. Sarah King, it's nice to see you here as well. And Barbara is from Canada. So many good people. Judy, hi. Um, Judy, I'm pretty sure that you asked something in the DMs, so that'll be fun to answer some of these questions. Um, Jamie McGrath, is watching and Yorkshire UK it's 9 p.m. here okay that's good to know what time it is for everybody too. Ontario Canada and Gay Roads is watching as well so glad to have everybody join us um Cork Ireland that's cool and Linda is from Pennsylvania so nice to see everybody on here so we are gonna jump into it wow and my hair is like super dark right now but I literally just got out of the shower today and tossed my hair up into a bun and then went and volunteered in the classroom so we had a really busy morning today. Um, if anybody saw my Instagram post over on jamie.scott, I shared just a brief short little snippet of what our morning was like um, over there. So Logan, um, Logan couldn't find his backpack and his lunch and I had already packed it for him and I still don't know where that child put it. So we had just one of those wild mornings getting out the door where a couple of the kids were fighting. Um, Violet, woke up early or woke up later she needed some extra sleep so i think she's having like a growth like a uh, growth spurt um so she woke up and she just kind of woke up on the wrong side of the bed because one of her siblings came and woke her up and when she came to and came down for breakfast lily was wearing a brand new dress that we had gotten from little stocking company and it was the color purple and violet felt like it belonged to her and nobody else and so there was a little tiff between the sisters this morning about that um but i loved that violet problem solved after 20 minutes time she was like what if i wear that other purple dress that somebody sent me for my birthday so she ended up wearing that today and everything was good so yeah we had just one of those mornings where i almost had kids miss the bus and um, I was head counting and we have two of the neighborhood kids that live in the neighborhood that were there at the bus stop too. And so I was thinking I had all five, but one had run back inside the house right before the bus came. And so I was like, I, who am I missing? Which of the kids? Because two of them from the back kind of look the same. So anyway, we got everybody off to the bus. It ended up being okay and it all worked out and everybody's good. But you know, every day is different as a parent. You never know what you're going to get. Um, Vivi, so sweet of Violet to share with her sister. That's what I told Violet too. And Lily was adamant that she still wanted to wear the dress because I had told the girls, like they sent Little Stocking and Company sent us so many different options of colors of dresses with these cute knee high socks and tights for the girls. And so I told the girls, no color belongs to anybody. They're everyone's colors. And so Lily felt kind of sad for her sister, but she was not giving up the purple dress. And so anyway, she drew just this nice, sweet little picture for her sister, hoping that it would make her feel better. But um, anyway, so we are gonna be taking some questions here in just a minute. I did have some questions that came in through the DM, so I will be answering those today, but gosh, it is the end you know, winding down of the school year. And it just feels like everything's at like super speed. I was talking to a bunch of people over at ballet yesterday for the girls and they were telling me um, just a lot of those same things that feelings that they have towards the end of the school year, all of the end of the year dance recitals and soccer games and this and that and you know just the running around that you feel as a parent towards the end of the school year sometimes now luckily for us like it's not as wild as it used to be 
um, now that Shaden is out of the house and in college and Landon, the only extracurricular land he has right now is he does guitar lessons. So other than that, the girls have a dance recital at the end of the year. Um, that's been a little tricky because the teacher pulled me aside yesterday and said, if Violet does not come to class, she does not get to perform, perform in the dance recital because that's just part of their studio policy. So everyone needs to participate in class time. Otherwise the child doesn't know the dance and they don't get to perform. So she'll still get her costume, but she's got to start coming to class so that she knows the routine. She knows the dance. Um, and Vivi, I don't know that dance is going to be her thing. If it is, I would think a different form of dance. So instead of ballet, like tap or cheer or something else, I think she might make a great soccer player, a little basketball player. So we'll just have to see. Um, so we'll see if she ends up in the dance recital or not. So um, anyway, Stephanie, it's good to see you from Anaheim. Sandy Miller is watching too. So fun. I think Wednesdays really are, have become my favorite day of the week because I get to hang out with all you cool people. So anyway, um, I am just going to hop into it. Desiree asked, how are the kids in school? So as far as today, I did get a call from the school about 20 minutes ago and one of the boys had had an accident. So sometimes the little kids, they get distracted and they forget to take a break and go use the restroom. And so one of the boys had an accident in the school, had called to see if I would bring in um, just an extra pair of undies. The school always has like a whole bunch of different sizes for the kids. So if they ever have an accident at the school, they're well stocked, but it is the end of the school year. And so they were running low on supplies and all they had left was a pair of boxers. And this little child in particular was like, I am not going to wear that. And so I was like, well, school's getting out in like an hour and a half. So if you can just wear those until you get home and then you can change into something that's more sensory friendly. So they asked if I wanted to talk to one of my boys and I was like, yes, let me talk to him. And so I talked to him and I just reassured him that like once he got home, he could change and then he was like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. So I just don't think he understood that boxers, I mean, they're not the same as briefs, but they're still underwear. They're not shorts. And so he was a little confused about that. So anyway, he's fine. Um, the girls are doing well. I went and volunteered in the classroom and they are doing really well. One thing that I've noticed about this school that's really cool is, and maybe this is across the board that we're seeing a little bit more in public schools now, like post COVID, is kids can go take a break if they need to from the classroom if they're feeling overstimulated or just need to take a break and they have something called the wellness room and so one of my girls um while i was there volunteering had taken a break and gone into the wellness room and they have things like i'm not sure exactly what they have over there they have like a teacher and advisor that's in there in case like the child needs to talk about anything but um they have i think they might have like I don't know if anybody knows much about wellness rooms, what they have in there. I think my kids have kind of mentioned they have like sensory stuff that's like calming for kids, which is really cool that they provide that in schools these days. I think I would have benefited tremendously growing up in school with something like a wellness room where we could go and have calming music to listen to or play with something that just like helped calm anxiety or nerves or whatever it was that the child was feeling that day. So I thought that's really cool that the teacher extends that and offers that to the students there in class. Um, okay, so yeah, kids are doing doing well in school. Daisy's really picking up on reading right now, and that's kind of the station that I'm assigned to right now is the kids had to read like nonsense words, which that's not something we ever did growing up. If we were gonna read words, they were real words. So that's kind of new in the curriculum that they do these days, is it teaches the kids how to read words, but they're not actual words. Um, we are in Vegas and have nothing like that. That's so cool. Um, yeah, Kimberly, I, maybe it's just something that this school has created. I know at Landon school, when he was at, um, the sixth and seventh grade school, they had a wellness room as well. And it seemed like, like, I don't know. So it's like, it's not necessarily for kids that have special needs or anything like that. It's just a place where kids can go to help calm their mind and calm their bodies. And so it's really cool that schools have picked up on this and teach these skills to kids. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, let's see. Deborah asks, do you find the one week on one week off arrangement for the kids works well? And would you consider changing it? 
Um, so that since dad and I have 50, 50 parent time, um, a lot of parents will do like two days on two days off and then we'll alternate weekends. And for us, it just works better to do seven days on seven days off and especially having quintuplets with two different households. So trying to reset the kids in my home, from my experience, it takes a good two or three days to reestablish. These are the rules. These are the boundaries. You can say this, you can't say that, that's not appropriate. So anyway, it's like, I think it's good and it works for now. Um, I think as the kids get older, we can always look at that. Um, one thing that we're trying is having Landon go from Wednesday to Wednesday instead of Sunday to Sunday. So that way he gets a good solid three days with each parent. Um, so we are going to be trying that pretty soon here. And I think it'll be good for Landon. So that way he doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Um, I know other families that have seven children. My friend has quadruplets plus three older kids. She's an amount an amazing mother. So if you guys haven't checked out the Staley Quad Squad on Instagram, you want to check her out. I adore her. So she navigates parenting really well between she and her husband and the way they share and combine responsibilities as a family and as a team. And so that's something that she and I have discussed is making sure that all the needs of our kids um, are met and fulfilled. And so I feel like switching off from like Wednesday, Wednesday will be really good for Landon. So I thought that was a really good question that Deborah asked. Um, Judy asked, where's Skylar? So if you have not watched for a while, Skylar and I are divorced. We've been separated for over two and a half years and divorced for a little over a year. Um, so you are welcome to check out what he's up to. His channel, I think was called the soul surrender show, but I think he just barely changed it like yesterday. So I, I don't know. I don't watch his stuff. So you can see what he's up to these days. Um, Rebecca Blackston, thanks for joining us today. Um, let's see, we do have some questions coming in. We still go to June here. I think your question was when is school out? We asked that again. It came in really quickly with a bunch of other people's at the same time. Amber, it's good to see you. Um, and Beverly, it's good to see you as well. Okay, so our next question, how it comes from Carrie. How do you not get overstimulated? Or what do you do in those moments? Um, for me, this is like my number one question. I don't know how other parents of higher to multiples do it. I have talk to and have really good open conversations where we both laugh and cry with other moms of hired or multiples. I feel overstimulated almost every single day. Um, there's very few days where I don't have those moments. I think the way I'm wired, I'm just a really sensitive person. I feel deeply and I feel what my kids feel all the time. So if my child is really passionate about something like I feel their frustration, I feel their hurt, I feel all of that as their mom. So moments like that, I kind of just have to like set this barrier and be like, okay, this is how my child is feeling, but I get to set the tone of the family and realize, okay, this is this child, this is what they're feeling, this is their experience, and I'm there to be their guide as their mother. So sometimes I do have to take breaks. I think self-regulating as a person, as a mom, as a woman, is something that I need daily. Um, I try to do a lot of that, like when the kids are, like when I don't have my kids, but if it's like in the moment, sometimes it gets really tricky. I sometimes just have to like take a deep breath in and exhale. Um, or I've been listening to music a lot lately and that's been really, really helpful. And there was a time where I had like completely stopped listening to music in my life. And so it's nice to have that back in my life. Um, everybody's so kind here. So I am seeing more comments coming in. Um, Tiffany asks, are the kids adapting well to the new changes? I think so. I think change and the ability to adapt to change is a life skill that's undervalued. And so I think my kids are learning some of those things now at an early age. Um, and so I think it's good. It has taken us a while though to adjust to the new changes. Like divorce is not ideal in most families and our family in particular, it just was a choice that was made that was necessary and that was best for our kids. Um, so there have been some bumps along the way with the kids trying to understand that, um, but they do a pretty good job. And they, one thing that we talk about is it's okay to love 
both your mom and your dad. You don't have to pick sides and that there's room for love to expand. And so those are conversations that I have with my kids because sometimes they feel like they have to have a favorite. So sometimes they will say to me, daddy's more fun because he buys us stuff or takes us on trips and I validate he does like and that's great because it means in some ways I don't have to so anyway I think it's good the kids are navigating it well and I'm really proud of them Lori asks are you still dating I think that's a really good question um, if you didn't catch my last live video you might want to go back and watch that I did update everybody just on things with um, Austin we are taking a break and giving it time um, just to see how we think and feel about everything um, and to help us just get clear about what we want and what we need. And one thing that I expressed to him is this need to expand my mind and experiences by opening the door to date other people, to have that experience. So I have been getting to know some new people. I did join an online dating app, which I was really weirded out about that at first, um, but I think it's easier now to sift through people I'm interested in, people I'm not. I certainly have a type. I like clean cut, good kind um, types of people. I am not interested in the gym selfies, and I have seen a lot of those on these dating apps. I don't know why men think that that might be intriguing to women. For me, it's not. I just want down to earth people, and I am looking for someone that will be just a a wonderful best friend and partner for life so anyway that's been good just having different conversations with some different people and just taking my time to get to know people um, I haven't met any of these people yet and I am just one that takes things really 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 slow so we will see how, how that goes but I thought that was a really good question and I don't mind addressing it um, Laurie says you're an awesome mom thank you that's really kind I'm learning every single day um, let's see Holly asks, did you have an idea of Skylar's belief changes prior to the divorce? And this is one that I've not addressed, nor have I talked about. Um, I, I did not. So if that's in regards to like faith, his faith, I think that came after the separation, his change in belief systems when it comes to faith. Um, mine have remained the same and I stand firm in my belief system. Um, so yeah, I didn't see that coming. So that was all new to me, um, just with where he stands with things. So yeah, I thought that was a good question. It's relevant. I know I've been asked that one before over the last two and a half years, and I've been a little bit hesitant to answer some of those questions, but no question. I've ever been afraid to answer. I just want to make sure that I'm always respectful of the co-parents that I co-parent with, as well as out of respect because he is my kid's father. So anyway, I thought that was a good question. Holly asked, Katie says, what's a favorite family meal at your house? Um, so I did find a recipe that is egg free that all the kids can have. That's like a breaded chicken recipe um that the kids most of them like now kids with sensory stuff it takes time well my hair is crazy it takes time i feel like to keep reintroducing certain meals so the kids get used to trying new things so just because a kid doesn't like it the first time they try it doesn't mean they're not ever going to like it and so i try if it's a good like solid recipe and like half the kids love it i'm going to reintroduce it every few weeks so that they get the hang of trying new things. So it's a really good panko breaded recipe. It's seasoned with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Landon loves it too, and it's really great like on top of Caesar salad, like the leftovers. So that's been a good one and a family favorite. We also like BLTs, except my kids, the quintuplets are kind of quirky. Everybody except for Lily will eat like a normal BLT, but everyone else like likes it separate. They like their bacon and then a piece of bread, and some of them are starting to like the lettuce so they're just picky little kids and I think how you introduce new foods can kind of help with that you know two of them got the sensory processing thing so that's always different um, but just teaching them to try new foods and then talk about what they like what they don't like and to have them help make the meals when possible I mean it is a tiny little kitchen so to have 50 fingers trying to help me in a tiny kitchen that only has like one working space gets a little hard in this house but 
we do try and rotate and take turns with the kids. And so anyway, those are just some of our family meals. So I thought that was a good question. Um, April, or April Peck is watching. Um, nice to see you on here. So I'm going to take a few questions and then I'll answer a few more that came in previously within the last 24 hours. Usually I post like the day before, but it was a bit wild yesterday with the kids. Um, love that you're keeping your faith. Thank you. I think faith is what gets me through the day and hope is a powerful word. And on the days that I just want to be a quitter of life, like as a mom, because it's just hard or it's just not always fun. Faith is what keeps me grounded. My faith and hope in God and the atonement of Jesus Christ that like he knows and understands how I think and how I feel. Cause I can't always call up my best friend and be like, so what's it like raising your quintuplets? Cause my best friend down the street had twins and the other one had triplets. So it's just totally, totally different. Um, but nowadays, like I do have girlfriends that have quadruplets and quintuplets. Um, so I am able to converse with them and have a good laugh and have a good cry. And I actually think one of them is passing through St. George this week, maybe today. So I'll have to call her and see if they're in town. That would make a fun vlog. So y'all could see quintuplets and quadruplets together. It gets a little wild, but there's so much love and it's such a good time. And we always, when we get together, we always have a good laugh. So, um, Faith is great, and I really love how you teach your kids. Thank you. Prayer is the door. Faith is the key. Deep words. Yes. Very, very true. Um, okay, we've got comments coming in. They are coming in rather quickly, so I'm going to see if I can read some of these as they are coming in. Are you still thinking of taking the wall out in the kitchen? Yes, but... I don't have money to do that anymore. So for now, I will probably just paint the kitchen cabinets that I do have. Um, the room that I'm in right now is the homeowner suite. Um, I don't think I've done a house tour since I've moved in for everybody. And so many people have asked that. So I think I will probably do that. It's going to be a messy house tour though, because we are in the middle of like spring cleaning and I've been still, I have been renovating this laundry room forever. I think just time wise, it's taken a lot longer. I've been working with the handyman who I think is the coolest guy on the planet. He's so nice. And so he's teaching me along the way. And then also my finances have changed. And so I've been paying for things with cash as I go. The last few things that I need to do is install a new toilet, um, hang a mirror. I have like one wall that I need to finish up another layer of paint. And then I need to install the P traps underneath the sinks, baseboards, and the faucets. So those of you that have felt like I just keep you hanging with the laundry room renovation. It's just taking me quite some time to get it done. So I'm really hoping that next week I can get all of that done, but it's probably going to take another pair of helping hands um, to get the job done, but it's gonna be great. A house tour would be wonderful. I agree. I, this is the coolest property. So this house was built in 1989. It's a French country gem and it just has beautiful bones. Like the house that I originally um, built with their dad, with Skylar. Um, I kind of patterned it after this similar style of home um, with just that steep pitched roof. And I just find it charming and it has so much character. So it's been really, really fun. Um, have you ever seen the Waldrop family that had the show Sweet Home Sex Tuplets on TLC? I've, we had a conversation with the husband um, like, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago. And he was really down to earth, just good, good man. Um, because she's so busy. So anyway, sometimes brainstorming and things, but she's in a different category. She's got one more kid and then also juggling sex tablets for every extra child you have. It's just more. And so I think she's probably more part of that sex tech sex tuplet group, which sex tuplets only come around successfully. I think the average is like every seven years. So it's very, very rare. And on hard days, I always think I could have had sex tuplets because originally when I was doing IUI through ultrasound, there were six follicles. And if those had all taken, then I would have had sex tuplets or if they had split, I could potentially have had sex tuplets. So I think I can handle quintuplets, but on a hard day, sometimes I really look at Courtney Waldrop and really admire her, her faith, her values and what she instills and teaches in those children. I just, I think she's a remarkable person. So I thought that was a great question and comment that you just made. Um, let's see another question. Virginia says, can you say who's the tallest to shortest? This is a big deal right now to the quintuplets. 
Lincoln believes strongly that he is the smallest and the shortest because he doesn't eat enough chicken. I'm like, well, if you ate more chicken, you would probably grow more. But I, I don't think Lincoln, it's because your lack of eating chicken. So um, right now, I think it's probably a tie between Daisy and Lily. One of those girls is the tallest. If I did a lineup, it might equate to some fighting. I'm not sure which child is the tallest, probably Daisy or Lily. The one that's filled out the most with growth spurts right now is actually Daisy, which surprises me um, because she's a little more picky of an eater, but she doesn't have any food allergies. So she has the ability to eat whatever she wants. Um, so Daisy has had just a massive growth spurt as of late. Um, Lily's catching up too tour um then i would say next in line would probably be i don't know the girls seem like they're hitting their growth spurts first um so probably violet and then i would say logan and lincoln for sure is the smallest um we've got some good questions coming in somebody just barely asked me would i change my last name i don't think so um back when i was dating austin he had asked that and i just feel like if anybody's gonna google scott family quintuplets, I want to be associated with that because I'm their mama. So even if I remarry, I'm, I don't know, I may take on the last name of someone else, but I'm really proud of everything my family's done these last 18, 19 years. And so I'll probably stick with Scott. My maiden name is Smith. So to me, Scott is pretty much the same thing as Smith. Um, and also I want my kids to be matchers with me and have the same last name. So I think I'll stick with, I think I'll stick with Scott. It's pretty much the same as Smith to me. It's pretty generic. Um, great question. Okay. So next question, Beverly says, you got the question just keep getting harder. Um, Beverly says, do you still talk to Skylar apart from the kids and how's, how's Austin, your new friend going? And Beverly is from Scotland. Do I talk? Do I still talk to Skylar apart from the kids? Um, no, I don't. We just keep um, our conversation to just the kids at this point in time. Um, we are just on different paths and we have different lives. And um, I did see a question come in about do we live close by to each other? Um, he is um, moving again. And so he is moving closer to town. So before it was about a 25 minute drive out to his house. And now it'll probably be like five to seven minutes in town. So that'll be nice because it'll save me a ton of gas just going back and forth. But the drive won't be as pretty. Where he was living before, it was really pretty. It was kind of out by this lake and it was just really nice. Um, Claire Ryan is watching. That is a really cool name. Um, I have somebody texting me right now. So I don't know how to like turn off the text. Every once in a while I'll get texts that come in. Um, Sandra Rose is watching too. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, I thought that really asked a good question and it's cool to see where everybody lives. Okay. So I'll take some more questions. My sister changed her last name. It was hard on the kids in the beginning, but it just got better. Um, it was hard for me having a different name than my brother. Yeah. I just, I like, I like us all to be matchers and every family is different. I know my sister changed back to her last name just because she identifies more with her name. Um, but I was also married for what, 18, 19 years. And so a lot of people know me by that last name. Um, so yeah, for, it's different for everybody, but for me, I'm going to stick with Scott. Um, probably until the day I do choose to remarry. Um, hello from North Dakota. It's good to see you. So if you guys do have questions, you're welcome to ask them. Are you still dating Austin? Jean asked. I thought we were totally taking a break, but I don't know that that's totally been the case this last week because we still both miss each other. Um, so we did, we did talk last night and the night before. Um, we'll probably talk again today, but I'm also opening the door to not just dating one person um, so that I find the person that's the best fit for myself and importantly, the best fit for my family. But it is going to take a special cat. As you can imagine, online dating and I like to let people know up front. Um, so like the third text in with some of these gentlemen, I'm going to call them gentlemen. It doesn't mean that they are. It's just at this point in time, I'm going to say that they are. But I've let them know I have quintuplets plus two and it's really easy to like sift through people rather quickly 
because some people are just like silent and I've not heard from them in like a week. So I'm like, well, then that one wasn't meant to be. So, you know, it's, it's been different. It's been different, but it's good. And it's good to meet new people. It's good to have people, um, you know, that I converse with and get to know that are adults and have good adult conversations. So I see a lot of a lot of comments as people are coming on coming on here. Like, are you still dating Austin? So I wouldn't say that we're necessarily dating. We've not gone on more than like four dates together, and it is long distance, so it is different. Um, somebody just quite said something about my goddaughter. If you'll keep commenting until I answer it. Um, online dating is so hard. I speak from experience now. Um, I think I do have a pretty good profile, I'm going to say, because I honestly thought when I hopped on there that like one person would swipe up and say, hey, it's nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. And it would take a few weeks down the road. And that has not been my experience. So I think because um, I do social media, I just have a lot more photos to put up there of just things that are just about me. So anyway, but... I didn't put that I had quintuplets though, because I just think I'm a little more guarded there in case there's any weirdos out there. But I did post a picture of two of the girls when they were babies with me like holding them because I feel like that opens the door for conversation. And depending on how a person takes that, it tells a lot about the person to me. So um, somebody asked, are you still sharing the vlogs and the platforms? Um, we have divided platforms. If you haven't been watching over the last two and a half years, I now have Facebook and he has Instagram and YouTube, although there is talk about um, acquiring one of the other platforms. So I will let you know as soon as I know that. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's been a wild ride these last two and a half years, but I feel like I've come a long way with just even my ability to be more assertive, to talk more and to feel more comfortable on camera. I think my background as a former dancer, it was kind of hard doing the social media thing because I'm used to being like really quiet and expressing myself physically, but not like vocalizing things. So it was really hard for me at the onset about two and a half years ago to really want to talk or share anything. And I kind of just wanted to shut the world out for a few months. Um, somebody said they met their husband on Bumble. What is that? Is that like an online dating app? I don't know. I'm on one that is Christian but it is like specifically for my faith. And so people are able to write like how often they attend church, if they attend the temple. Um, and I can tell a lot about a person by what they say about themselves. The other thing I'm learning about these online dating apps is if like there's one person that I wasn't interested in because like the third or fourth text message and he just started talking poorly about his former spouse. And for me, that's just not okay. That tells me a lot about the person. And so I just want somebody that's very respectful, very kind and extends grace to others. So yeah, that whole online dating thing, that's so weird to me. I never thought I would be in that category. I just always thought that I would be continuing to date my husband until we got old, watching the sunset in a couple of rocking chairs. And that has not been the experience that I've had. And so trying to expand my mission, my, my vision and my mind that sometimes that's best and it's okay. So um, finally catching the live, I love your positivity. Thank you. I, I can't say that I'm always positive, but I do my best. I met my husband on LDS Planet. You know, maybe I'll try that one too. I think I'm already juggling though enough conversations on the other one within an evening that I think I'm good with just starting there. But LDS Planet I hear is a good one too. So um, right now I'm on the dating app called Mutual that is like LDS Christian based, but I know there's like Christian Mingle too that people really love. Tinder kind of weirds me out because I watched a weirdo documentary about that. So I don't know. I don't know that I'm being into Tinder, but you're an amazing lady. The right guy. I couldn't read the last part. Yeah. So that's a little snippet about like how dating is going, but it, it is weird. Um, you are so authentic. Thank you. I hope to be more real. I think I felt like very guarded and protective the last few years just in navigating all of this. Um, but I really feel like this is a safe place for us to chat online here and that it's okay to be real and to be honest about how I really think and feel about things. And I hope y'all are okay with that. Just, just me. It's just me. That's how I think and feel about things. So, um, 
let's see. So anyway, yeah, if we can keep extending kindness and grace to each other in our comments, I always appreciate that. I think when it gets a little bit too wild on here, it makes me not want to share stuff. So if we can keep it kind, I always appreciate that. We always have such a large fan base from the UK and from Australia, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, she, friend's daughter just found out she's expecting quadruplets. Okay, there is a face group Facebook group that she can join and they are a wonderful resource tool and um, support system and then you can connect with these people and I, I have lifelong friends because of the Facebook group that I have been a part of and that's how I found my people as I call them and I think you know you find your people and it just makes life better. We are watching from Maine. Valerie it's nice to see you. Um, so anyway, I just love all of you and you've been so kind to my family over the years and I can't thank you enough. It really has been su such an opportunity for these kids in providing a life in a creative way um, to help raise these kids and I'm just so very grateful. Um, Diane Busby is watching and Julie is watching from Louisiana. So many great people. Um, so anyway, Wisconsin in the house. Mary, it's good to see you. Um, so anyway, yeah, you guys are welcome to ask me some more questions here. This is why I love this. I think people are kind. I enjoy your chats. Thank you. I have my days where I honestly just want to shut the world out. I think this last Monday was kind of one of those days for me. Um, and I just needed a good cry. So I wasn't going to pick up the camera and vlog all of that because the reality is as human beings, we feel all the emotions and I just needed a good day to just cry and, um, all of that. So anyway, it's okay. It's good. Um, hi from Hopewell Junction, New York, Jane. It's nice to see you on here. Kindness is a circle. I like that. I like that. Why is women on here? So much to learn. Thanks for being so positive, especially your ex. Thank you. I think that's important for the children to see is even if you disagree with your co-parent, that they still deserve respect in front of your kids. Shaden seems to have found a soulmate. Um, what was the last part of your comment? Um, Shaden was down for about a week's time and he really does love Tatum. And I think something good will come of their relationship, even if they end up parting ways, but those two really like each other. And so they are planning on attending separate colleges. Um, and I think that's good because it gives them each time to grow. And Tatum is graduating from high school this year. So we'll see this summer what they decide to do. But Shaden really wants the opportunity to, co to continue playing soccer um, over, it, um, over in Wyoming. And so it really is an incredible experience and opportunity for him. And the amount of growth I've seen in that child, that young man, has been remarkable. So money was really tight for him that first semester because he chose not to work the summer before, even though I encouraged him to. Um, and so he went into that first semester really having a full understanding, realizing the cost of inflation, the cost of rent, um, and what it's gonna take for tuition. And so he hustled when he came back down i think it was during christmas break he worked for benji from not enough nelson's and um he was so wonderful as like a boss so shaden like worked 10 hour days shoveling rock landscaping whatever it is that benji asked him to do he did it and he had saved up like quite a few thousand dollars before he headed back into that next semester and so he's got almost an entire full year under his belt of college getting his generals in and he's grown so much as a person and like who he is outside of his parents figuring out what he wants in life and realizing he doesn't want to settle so i really love it i love his relationship with tatum i love that they are just kind to each other and one thing that i really love about this cute little couple for how young that they are is like once a month they'll kind of like get together and just have a chat about like how they're doing how the relationship is what they can each work on and improve on i'm like wow the two of you should both grow up to become therapists and i think that's the plan i think shaden's looking at social work for now 
and he'd be really great. He's really great with kids. He would do great at that. And then Tatum is looking at becoming an LMFT and she would be wonderful. I think she's also said that she wants to specialize in helping war veterans with PTSD. And I think we had a great discussion about that. I had PTSD for like the first, I don't know, like the first six months when I first brought those babies home because during that time period of being pregnant with the quintuplets, I really was in survival mode. And the therapist I was working with at the time taught me these skills to be able to get through each day and take it one day at a time. And when my water broke one hour at a time. And so PTSD is a real thing that people suffer from and it often goes undiagnosed. Um, but things like I was having like, I would wake up with nightmares just like drenched in sweat and then I would just like cry. And at the time Scott and I were married and so I would talk to him about that and then I would be like, okay, I need to go do a session because PTSD is something that you often have to work through in layers and it takes time to really process it. But I feel like, you know, six years out, birthdays are still a little tricky for me because it brings back a lot of that stuff. But it just gets better over time as I work on it and as I'm able to identify what it is that are triggers. And so I think the work and the good work moving forward that Tatum wants to do is going to make a real impact in people's lives. And she's darling. She's so cute. We love her. So anyway, that's those are my thoughts on Shaden and Tatum and how they're doing and how that's all doing. I would love for her to be a part of our family one day. But whether she is or she isn't, she's amazing. Um, how are the chickens? They are doing good. I have one regret with chickens. I wish I would have gotten chickens sooner. I love being a chicken lady. I love taking care of them. I love how they just come to me when I have things like cucumbers and watermelon and leftovers. And I love that I'm able to recycle and in return they poop and I'm able to use the poop for my gardening stuff. Um, one thing I'm really looking forward to and excited about is having a pet rabbit. And I know that there were some comments that were a little like yes and no about us getting a rabbit, but I have wanted a rabbit for myself personally for like eight years, I think at this point. And yes, is a pet. Yes, it would have a beautiful life in this gorgeous little backyard of, of ours that I have just like this perfect little spot to put it in. But I also want the rabbit for the fertilizer that it will produce and it will teach my children gentleness and kindness. And I think it'll be really therapeutic for Logan in particular and Daisy with their sensory processing. If they're feeling overstimulated or overwhelmed just to come and spend some time in our backyard with just a pet and an animal that's very gentle by nature and very sweet by nature. And I feel like both those kids are like that too. So anyway, I, I love having chickens. So that was a great question. I almost got a sixth little baby chick, but honestly, the amount of eggs is hard to keep up with because three of my kids are allergic to eggs. And so it's the neighbors that are buying and purchasing eggs from us because we have just extra, um, Anyway, let's see. Somebody just said LDS something. Will you re-answer or re-ask your question? And I'll read it. That one came in um, just really quickly and I'm happy to answer that for you. You are such a natural with the live sessions. Thanks. I feel like I can be my awkward self in these a little bit more. And if y'all don't mind, that's just me. <laughs> but um, you're going to have to show us the rabbit when you get one. Thank you. I really love Holland Lop rap Rabbitry. Um, I've wanted a Holland Lop rabbit for probably i would almost say eight or nine years like really researching taking my time um and whether or not i want an indoor pet or an outdoor pet i might actually have both um both types of hutches um do you still own the rv that you traveled in no we sold the marital home to divide assets and we also chose to um sell the rv um skyler had the truck for a while and then sold that um, but the RV, I would not want to have to drive that big old thing around and things would break in it, but there were some good memories and some good times that we had as a family in that. Would I do it again? I think if I had a spouse and a partner that was willing to put in the work and take care of it and all of that, then I would be open to that. But I'm kind of like a one man show over here, a one woman show. And so it like my Nissan NV, the 12 passenger, it could pull like a trailer, um, but do I want to? Probably not. Cause if I've got kids hooting and hollering while I'm trying to like reverse it and back it in, like I'm not the best at parking a car, that car, a car, um, that that's, that's that big. I usually park far away when I'm at the grocery store just because it's big. And if I'm super tired, it just takes me a bit longer to park it. So I don't know. I, I think I could do like a little camper, 
um, if I wanted to do that. I think Landon would be down if there was like a camper that I could spruce up and fix up and DIY project, but I think I've got enough on my plate just trying to spruce up this house. So um, I'll probably start with the house first. Um, strawberry picking trips are my was the favorite video ever. I was just reminiscing about that today. Um, I love the Northwest in Bellingham, Washington, and we have so many great family member or family memories there and traditions there. Um, and strawberry picking there was so fun. So, yeah, I if you ever have been to Bellingham, Washington, Ferndale, Washington has just rows and rows of like the juiciest strawberries that make the best homemade strawberry jam. I would love to take my kids up there this summer, but just the cost with gas and a place to stay and all of that is just not in my budget. So I really do miss the Northwest. And I hope one day to bring the kids back because that really was one of my favorite memories um, was strawberry picking there too. Okay, we'll take a few more questions. Um, so if you've got them, I am happy to answer them. They can be about any topic. My LDS question was just curious, why no coffee? Was that the last part of it? I don't know, actually. Um, so just strong drinks, like we don't drink alcohol in my faith. It's called the word of wisdom. Um, so obviously it's a choice. You have your agency, but we don't drink coffee. We don't drink tea unless it's uh, like a fruit tree or like herbs, so anything like strongly caffeinated. But I do love myself a Dr. Pepper. So we do drink, well, not everybody, but I do drink soda and I do love it. Um, what color are the kids' rooms is somebody's question. Uh, right now, the boys, the big boy, like the house hasn't really been updated too much. Um, but I'm hoping to paint the girls' room and do like board and batten and have it be like a pale blush pink with white board and batten um, because I already have the same things from the last house. Um, but it would be fun to add like more pops of lavender in there, um, especially Violet. I think she would love it. I could pull colors from the rug and the rug in the girl's room is primarily like lavender colors. So um, I may do that. But again, I'm paying cash as I go. So I'm going to need to save up for that. But I got to finish up the laundry room first. And my next thing is I got to buy a toilet. Oh, every time I do this, it does the thumbs up emoji. So I need to buy a toilet. And I need to buy a mirror for that bathroom because it is out of service for right now. Um, we have people from Alberta, Canada. What is your goal for 2024? Um, I think authenticity is a good one. I think being true is a good one. And I think being kind is being a good one. Do you love cooking dinners or prefer baking cakes, biscuits, etc.? I would say baking hands down is more rewarding for me because it tends to taste sweeter. Um, but I just, my KitchenAid just broke. So I really need to get a new one, but I'm looking at the cost and they're like $230 and I really need a toilet and it's probably going to cost about the same. So I do love baking, but it's been a hot minute since I've really done baking because like I made homemade brown sugar the other day and it took me 45 minutes just to incorporate the sugar with the molasses. So everything's taking longer to make in that kitchen, but We'll get there. I think the kids too, they probably appreciate baking more than they do the cooking. Um, you guys ask a question. So some of you are still talking. Um, so in your faith, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, our faith, my faith is founded on the principles um, that Jesus Christ taught. So things like love your neighbor, um, being, I'm trying to think all of the, you know, all the commandments, all of those things. Yes. All good things. Um, so people have really been at asking a little bit more. I'm seeing in the questions about this word of wisdom. Now, when I was considering moving down to Texas, I was talking to a group of people, um, cause they kind of had like some tour stuff and like pioneer home stuff. And like, anyway, and this was like a subcategory of people that are Mennonites, just really, really good people. And I didn't realize that other faiths sometimes have like a word of wisdom as well. I don't know if Jehovah's Witnesses do as well, but this particular group of faith, she was telling me that they omit, they've omitted a lot of things from their diet as well, just as like a code of conduct. Um, and so anyway, it's just really, really interesting to me. Um, how different groups of people within their faith will have these like codes of conduct or these words of wisdom um, that they've decided as a congregation or as a group um, to make room for. And the gal was telling me that for the longest time they didn't eat 
or they didn't drink coffee and then they did like a group vote or something and decided that there was room for that. And I loved her phrase, there's room for that. I think they may not have had chocolate either. I don't know, maybe it was a caffeine thing, I'm not sure. Um, Terry Nelson is from Idaho Falls. Welcome, glad you're here. And Wanda Robertson is watching. So anyway, I, I always find it fascinating asking people about their faith in a very respectful way because it helps me get more clear on like my belief systems and then like what we all have in common too. I find it interesting because when I was talking to this group of people, they are out of Waco, Texas. I'm trying to think. It was like a homestead or like a, it was kind of like their way to bring people in is they would teach and have workshops and classes about things. And so I rubbed shoulders with these people just briefly during the time that I was considering moving to Waco, Texas uh, with my family. But ultimately, if you watch that video on like why I chose divorce, I talk a little bit more about that in there, uh, but it ultimately just wasn't the right decision for my family. Um, so yeah, I did purchase 10 acres in Waco, but realized it was just not the place to be. Um, Let's see, Carol is from Central Texas and Sheila is from Rhode Island. We have good people all over. Sometimes I underestimate the goodness of others until I hop on here and realize there are just so many good people around the world. Um, good day from Australia, love your family. Good day to you as well. Um, I was really hoping to announce when this magazine article was coming out. It was supposed to come out soon, but I'm not sure. So if anybody's heard of Take Five, it's hopefully supposed to come out. I think I can say that, but I don't know when. So I have been in Take Five magazine before when the babies were first born. So it was really fun catching up with the editor um, and the journalist that was writing that article. Um, Lori is from New Jersey uh, and Joanna is from Washington. So um, now Washington, are we talking about like Washington State? Where in Washington do you live? Does LDS believe in the Trinity, God, the Father, and the Holy Ghost? I'm guessing that's what your comment was. Yes, we believe in that too, but I think our belief is a little bit differently. We believe that there are three separate um, people, whereas I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the Trinity means one. Am I correct on that? I'm not sure. Um, so there are certain similarities within our face, but then they would be different as well. Uh, Karen, is, Karen is from Texas too. We have a lot of people from Texas here today. Um, and sending love from Wells. Catherine, it's nice to see you. You're being really daring with that neckline today. Oh, maybe I am. Thank you. It was a little bit risque. Um, I had somebody ask where this necklace came from. It is from Target and my top is from TJ Maxx. I think it is the brand Beach Loungewear. I love like an oversized t-shirt that's really, really set sensory friendly. I also have a t-shirt that kind of looks like this, but it's like lavender tones, which I love. And it's baggy and it's one I don't mind that doesn't feel like super stiff because it's just super friendly. So anyway, but you guys ask really good questions and I really don't mind answering them. And I am just now realizing that I have spilled like a big old thing of ketchup on myself. I went and ate it in and out like <laughs> right before I did the live video. I love me a good hamburger and fries. Um, and Kathy is from a small town. Are you still friends with the Dashleys? Um, I have somebody texting me right now. Um, I don't know that I was really ever friends with the Dashleys. They were more Skylar's friends, but I know the quintuplets went to one of their kids' birthday parties I'm gathering because, um, did you answer my question my husband called? No, I'm not sure if I answered your question or not. I just barely missed what you commented, what your first name was. Um, the blouse is just fine. It looks very nice. Um, yeah. So anyway, you guys ask really, really, oh, okay. The person that's texting me, I'm like, yes, I was telling you earlier I was going to do a Facebook Live so he can watch that at 2 o'clock. Um, hello, Jamie. It's nice to see you from Kentucky. Um, it's just good to see everybody. I have too many chickens here. I is what somebody just commented. Yeah, I have five chickens and it takes a lot of time and energy um, with everything that they produce. Where would you like to take your family for a holiday? If I could go anywhere... I, I mean, I am planning a trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming with the extended family. And I think that'll be really memorable. We went to Jenny Lake and it was so fun. We went all that way and it was so many good memories. Like it was just so, so peaceful. So I really want to go there. Um, if I could afford it, I would go back to Bellingham, Washington because it's just nostalgic for the older boys and I, cause those are a lot of 
things that we did that were just wonderful memories. Um, if I could take my kids anywhere in the world, I would love to go to Sweden. I think I have like family ties there, so that would be really cool. Or the UK or Australia. I know I have family ties to the UK, like distant, distant ties. So I don't know, I'm weird. I like seeing museums. I like doing like going to see plays. I like getting to know the people wherever it is that I'm going. I like attending church congregations in different places of the world. I like to see what everyone has in common as far as belief system, but the people are what make it different. And so I love making those connections. I love meeting new people. And I think that would be good for my kids too. Do any of the children get car sick? If so, what do you give them? Good question. Yes, the little boys used to be pukers. That's why they historically have sat in the front row seats. Um, they used to throw up every time we got in the car. So if we ever did long distance drives, the kids, the older boy or the two little boys would have to do Dramamine and we'd always have to carry like a big old like cup, like a big cup because it would catch the throw up rather quickly. And when we used to travel, we used to travel with a nanny or grandparents and the we would have somebody sit in between the boys so that they could catch the barfs because they just would get so sick. I don't know if it was like wimpy white boy syndrome. That's what they called it in the NICU with these preemies. Um, I get really car sick. Landon gets really car sick and Shaden gets really car sick. And so um, we would always have to just have them front and center and try not to have them looking down too much. And now when we travel, they don't get car sick as much. So that's really, really nice. So it makes traveling just a lot more enjoyable. What music do you listen to? Lately, I've been listening to a lot of Ed Sheeran um, and Taylor Swift, but I have to be careful with Taylor Swift because her stuff is really fiery. And sometimes I get a little worked up because she's very passionate about life. I mean, I guess it's okay, but um, I, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, Jason Miraz, I really love Jason Miraz. Um, my favorite artist is Ben Rector. Uh, my most favorite song of all time. My most favorite song is, um, please, me please let me make something beautiful. It's only 45 seconds. Ben Rector sings it. Um, he, and I've seen him in concert. He's so good and he's down to earth. I think his mother is a therapist. So his lyrics, lyrics are really good. Um, he also sings a song. There's nothing like old friends. I love that song. And then the men that drive me places. It's a song about being humble and about how sometimes we glorify people that have been given an upper hand in life, but we don't notice the people that every day work so hard. And it's a beautiful, I love, I love his songs. And he also writes about love and family and what it's like to have a daughter. And anyway, it just like touches my heart. Um, I also love, oh, what's her name? Ingrid Michaelson. Um, you and I, I've been listening to that song. Um, it's a really good one. That was one that Austin and I really liked. So it's a good one. Um, Ben, I will definitely list him. Yes. Ben Rector. He's really, really good. Um, I think he opened for Tim McGraw. I don't know. Somebody he's really, really good. What's the next renovation after the laundry room? I really want to do the kids playroom. Um, because I think I know what I'd like to do in there. Um, but I'm going to need to save up for this ship flap. So hopefully everybody just keeps watching and views go up and sponsorships pick up so I can pay cash as I go and do one room at a time. So just curious, hope you got a fair share in the divorce you seem to have to be budget friendly or budget tightly. Uh, you know, when we did mediation and divided everything, divided the platforms, all of that, we were doing really, really well with sponsorships and views and all of that. Um, and so things have changed, like neither one of us pays child support or alimony um, just because um, the social media presence, um, but things are a little bit differently. I think different for both our households now. So, um, but that's okay. So anyway, everybody's just so kind on here. Um, well, the kids are going to be getting off the bus soon and we have play dates set up with a few friends down the street. So that's kind of a new thing is doing play dates with friends and we are going to see how it goes. I always need to make sure um, that the kids have a good snack before we get together with and socialize with more kids because sometimes it just feels like a birthday party and my kids never go home from the party. So um, Beverly, I think it was you that just asked, will you be watching General Conference this weekend? Yes, she's referencing. So within my faith, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, 
two times a year in April in the spring and in the fall in October, we have something called General Conference where we listen to messages from leaders of our faith um, who are in service positions. And my favorite is listening to the leader of our church, Russell M. Nelson. I wanna say he's almost 100 years old. And he's just like the sweetest little man that just always has so much positive and kindness. So it'll be interesting to see what he has to say. I'm always curious um, with such a worldwide church, what it is that people feel inspired to talk about. So I'll have to see. But yes, uh, my kids, I don't know that they'll be watching it. They may, I may have it on in the background, typically how I've done, I've done it and how it works for me. So like just for some reference here for everybody. So instead of going to church, we listen to it or we can watch it. Like it'll be on the radio, they'll be broadcasting it, I think on YouTube, on LDS.org, or you can actually like go to the place that they're doing it, but you have to get tickets. So I usually on Saturday when they do it, I like to do gardening and just like listen to it. It is kind of a reminder of like when to plant stuff for me um, since I'm a gardener and I love that. Um, somebody just said Jeffrey Holland. He's really good. So Jeffrey Holland is one of the leaders in our faith. He has really good talks. If you head to LDS.org or Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I think is where you find it. And if you type in Jeffrey R. Holland, he talks a lot about mental health about being a good neighbor, about kindness, about gentleness. Some of my favorite quotes actually come from some of the things that he's taught, but I love listening to good messages from people of various faiths. I find it fascinating what we all have in common. Um, I love the Busby quintuplets and how they're not afraid to talk about their faith and share their faith about Jesus and how they view their relationship with Jesus. I think they'll do like speaking engagements or workshops or things and the way their church congregation is set up. And I love that they're just not afraid to share what they love. And I hope to be a little bit more that way, um, but to be inclusive as well with everybody. So hope you get a little more insight into my faith. Some of the things we talked about, um, life updates, but life is going good. The kids are happy, the kids are well, and I'm just grateful that, oh, and Vanessa, Extraordinary Magic. Yes, I love that song by Ben Rector too. So yeah, check out Ben Rector and Ingrid Michelson, some of my most favorite artists on the planet. They actually did a duet where they did a collab during COVID and that was beautiful too. So anyway, love to you all. Hope you have a good rest of your day and stay tuned for the next vlog. We'll see ya. Bye.